the IMF meeting uh, in Washington. What a wonderful time to catch up with Jagdish Bhagwati. Professor, wonderful to have you here. Nice to have you here. Here's your book, Termites in the Trading System. Termites in the Trading System, Preferential Agreements Undermine Free Trade. Where are the termites at the IMF? Are there termites down there in Lipsky's building? Uh, well, in a manner of speaking, I think the um, IMF has to be addressing uh, large numbers of issues, and I think it's beginning to do that, uh, sort of catching the termites or terminating them or, you know. Um, one big problem with the IMF was, as you know, uh, the, it, it, it really was pushing for capital account liberalization. That's what brought about the East Asian financial crisis. Those was, big flows. It was practically ideological. And so when huge amounts of capital flowed out, uh, even then, uh, and pre precipitating the East Asian financial crisis, even then they, uh, the IMF insisted uh, actually on, on raising interest rates, came down heavily on Malaysia for using capital account controls. It has completely changed its, its, uh, right. its approach now, exactly as I argued at that time they should. And you did in, in, in your great book, which we'll show here in a bit. Let's look at this chart, folks. Talk about capital flows as shown by yield. This is the Greek two-year that Gigi just talked about, the 10-year. And I use that word panic very careful. I don't like to instill panic, but you can see that 7-8 deviation spike in 2010, and we've crawled our way back up to that, that fear that's out there. What does Europe need to do to calm the capital flows that, that lead to these stratospheric yields? Well, I, I think the... Uh there was a difference between the East Asian financial crisis and the one which we're seeing in Europe right now. Uh, the one we are seeing in Europe, largely at least if, if Greece and Ireland are concerned, is excessive spending on a massive scale. That built up the debt burden. So they've got a twofold problem. What to do about the existing debt, which is astronomical compared to their ability to repay. The second is a current, current debt. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think both of them need to be addressed. And the European Union has been steadily moving towards a bailout. And I think they will move towards restructuring also. Why are we afraid of restructuring? This nation, I, I don't know in your native India how they establish bankruptcy, but in this nation, there's something about a fresh start. Why are we so afraid in the, the subprime financial crisis or the sovereign financial crisis? Why are we afraid to clear I, markets? I, I, I totally agree, but that's just the markets trying to prevent a haircut, you see. And I think in the case of European Union, it is the uh, French and German banks and to some extent British which are involved. So when you expect their governments to be taking a position on haircut, that means it affects their own banks. And I think that creates a, con you know, uh, a conflict of, of interest, basically. So I think as the situation is worsened and worsened, uh, mm -hmm. ultimately even the, you know, Angela Merkel, the, chan uh, the German chancellor, has been increasingly moving towards, towards both bailout and the possibility of a haircut. Mm -hmm. And I, I would predict in about a year's time, they're going to have a massive haircut. In fact, uh, your charts are beginning to show right. that we are kind of moving them in, inexorably. Uh, and this is something which the IMF will have to supervise. Uh, IMF actually for some years has been talking about how to exactly arrange for sovereign To, to debt. arrange for a haircut. For, arrange you for don't a haircut. need a haircut. I, don't, I just got a haircut as well. <laughs> Let's rip up the script right now. It's an audible. And as we do an audible, I, I have to ask about Bhagwati and your good colleague. There's the audible music. And, and, the, and, and your colleague Stiglitz. Two differing opinions on globalization. Where do you and Joseph Stiglitz agree? Oh, I think on capital flows, most definitely. I think when, when the East Asian financial crisis broke out, that's because nearly uh, 100 billion, uh, close to 100 billion flew out uh, under panic conditions, even though the basic underlying conditions were good. So I think one thing we learned at that time was that actually panic could ensue uh, in the marketplace, even though everything was dandy. It was quite unlike the Latin South American situation. So I think at that time, uh, Stiglitz was in the, uh, in the World Bank. Uh, 
and of course I'm a professor, uh, I wrote quite freely about how this implied that you really could not leave capital flows uh, alone, and that the free capital right. flows were not the same thing as free trade, for which I'm known mm -hmm. to be a major defender. I'm told that within the, the World Bank IMF system, Stiglitz took up the cause uh, right. of uh, trying to do something about capital flows, uh, but that mm -hmm. was on the inside. So there we agree. Uh, and I think another thing we agree on is that, uh, uh, which I, I've written more about, uh, which is that a whole lot of financial instruments, uh, there is a downside, potential downside. So financial innovation is not the same thing as yeah. non-financial uh, innovation. I like the word innovation, like the word, like the word synergy. Here's a heritage <laughs> chart, folks, in honor of Jagdish Bhagwati. Too much information. Here it is. 60 years of exports to GDP. There is the Pleasantville of America over on the left. Big export uh, a juggernaut out of World War II. Little competition, and then we go down. Is it critical that we boost that number? The president talks about maybe dollar weakness as a tool to jumpstart export growth. We're there at what, 10% or so export growth. Do we need a greater exports to GDP? Well, I, I, I think we just need more trade relative to the GDP. Uh, we need to have open markets. And I think what has happened in the last few years is that for a variety of reasons, largely um, due to panic sense of, you know, uh, how international trade is actually going to hurt our workers, and there's very little evidence for that. Uh, or that international trade is not good enough for us and that we ought to be more prudent, more inward looking, that we have actually our policies have undermined our role in the world economy on international trade. The president obviously has to, is trying to say, look, uh, we ought to export more in order to create more jobs. Right. But what, what, he, what he forgets is that, you know, our exports are somebody else's imports. So mm -hmm. if, if we say our exports are good but imports are bad, or, or we are silent on imports, that mm -hmm. contradicts what the other guys will be doing. So I think this is okay. where the president needs to broaden his rhetoric mm -hmm. well, away from just exports to say right. trade is good. Trade is good rather than, I like that headline. That's good. Read this, folks. Thank you so much, uh, Professor. You. This is a